What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. How are you guys doing? Yes, we are continuing this little series that we've got going on. All the news that, that keeps being unraveled on the Dragonflight series. So uh, I'm excited. There's so many things that are just happening right now and it's very exciting. And um, today we're going to focus on the talent tree stuff. So there's a couple tabs I have here about information that was released on the new talent tree. So we're going to go through... A couple of those and I've got an image of the talent tree up here ready to go to to talk about it as well so we'll get into that so grab your coffee and that's what this video will be primarily about is we're just gonna really focus on the talent trees because there's some really important information that came out when they first released it we were sort of guessing at all this information and now we have some more concrete evidence as to exactly what's going on in the talent trees how we're going to accumulate points where you can spend those points, um, how the trees kind of work out step by step. So we'll get there. Let's start with this post here. This was um, yesterday, 17 hours ago. So this is a blue post by Blizzard, obviously. They're clarifying a couple of things. So let's really, what we're going to focus on is these first two. We'll talk about all of them, I think, actually, but this middle one is really important. So <clears throat> hello there. We've seen a lot of questions with the talent tree. Uh, uh, about the talent system preview here in another feedback. We want to start answering uh, what we can. So will there be uh, the old style of talents, which is like a 1% gain that you put five points into, you know, that's that's a real concern for people, right? We don't really want to go back to the classic talent tree where we have, you're putting five points in to only get 1% per point. Like that's just feels bad, right? So they say primarily the latter, which is to say that there, uh, you'll only have like one point to put into most boxes. We're still experimenting quite a bit with drafting trees, but currently the majority of the nodes are one point, with some t being two to three. It turns out that the game has a lot more custom abilities and bonuses to potentially award in the tree than it did many years ago. Multi-point passives still exist, although even there, most are class-specific and simply giving stats. Think of the sorts of passive bonuses that we have uh, that have existed in the systems like conduits, artifacts, or azurite. More complex than a plain stat bonus, but simpler than the sort of thing that we would uh, currently be a level 50 passive talent or a legendary. Three-point passives can still have important purposes for doing things like balancing different paths. So what is concerning, this, and this post doesn't totally clarify it, but it, it's pushing in the right direction, is that they say you know, primarily the latter, that they only really want to stick to boxes that have basically one point in them, which means that that one point passive that you're going to get is going to be uh, significant versus it being like a 1% bonus. So for example, this circle passive right here, this is a passive, right? We got life bloom, and then we have a passive something, and then we have iron bark. And this passive is is not a five point passive giving you a one percent boost to like life bloom healing or something um it's it's going to be something more significant than that they're they're saying in this post that it's not going to be like having a, a full-blown talent effect they i don't think but it's going to be much much better than just a one percent boost so preach talked about this actually in his video preach uh, had a video on this you go check that out as well but he was concerned about Particularly the passive bonuses here, this passive, this passive, this two-point passive here, this two-point passive here. The concern is this cannot be just bark skin is 10% better. Like that can't be what they're doing. We really hope that that's not what they're doing. We're really hoping that this is something better. Like bark skin now maybe has a lower cooldown. Um, like a like a significantly lower cooldown, like 20 seconds less or or 30 seconds less, which would make it a much, much more desirable path to go down. Because if you go over here and grab these two talents, that's a significant investment you've made. And um, so I, I just hope that Blizzard has learned over the years that we were really tired of just getting like this is 10% better or whatever. We, we want it to be a more significant bonus. Like maybe this is like bark skin can be applied to one additional target or something. I mean, that has two points in, so that doesn't make sense. But this Swift Men talent, for example, this is a Swift Men passive talent right here. I really, really hope that this is not that, you know, Swift Men gets 20% better. This would be amazing if it was Swift Men has two charges now, which we used to have, and they alluded to it in this post. They said, uh, um, 
We think the sorts of passive bonuses that have exist. Think of the sorts of passive bonuses that existed in systems like conduits, artifacts, or azurite. So, like, th you know, th what I'm talking about in terms of this swift mem one, this was just an old way that the talent used to be set up. It used to have two charges, and that was a really awesome way to play the game. I think if you took soul of forest, it gave you two charges. Actually, I think it just had two charges baseline. Anyway, that's the point: is to say these circular passives, which is what these are. These square ones are abilities. These circular ones are passive, and we have c had confirmation that these hexagonal ones are choices. So these circular passive ones need to have a bigger impact in the talent tree than just being plus 10% more healing. So we're really hoping for that, and I think that this post here does help to push us in the correct direction. We're still not entirely sure, but we're really hoping that it goes in the right direction. So that's actually... <clears throat> What I wanted to talk about here, that's all I really want to talk about this post, because this next post helps to solve a lot of these problems for us. So this was posted about two hours later. They gathered all the information from like Twitter and a bunch of posts that people had asking questions, and they've compiled them all into one list here. We're going to go through this list, okay? So <clears throat> let's let's talk about it. When do talents become available? Okay, this is a good question. Talent system becomes available at level 10. So it's not at level 1, like we were maybe suspecting. When you choose your specialization for your class. For the Evoker, because they're starting at a higher uh, level, um, the talent tree will be made available at some point during their start experience. So that's fine. Probably like when Death Knights came in and they, had to, they got a bunch of points they got to fill out right away. How many talent points do you get and how do you get them? This is actually really important too because we, we had some ideas on this. Talent points are obtained by gaining character levels. So you get one per level. One point every level, alternating between talent point for your class and your spec tree. So <clears throat> that's okay, but that's a little sad. I was actually hoping that it was like open season and we get to pick wherever we want. But here's what they're saying. You get to level 10. You get one point in your class tree. You get to level 11 and you get one point in your resto tree. Then you get to level 12, you get one point in your druid tree. Level 13, you get one point in your resto tree. It just goes back and forth. So you do not just get one point every level that you can allocate wherever you want. It alternates. So that's a little bit disheartening, if I'm honest. Like, I wished it was the other way around where you got one point and you could spend it wherever you want. Um, and then maybe you were just limited in the number of points you could put into each tree. Because that's what they're doing anyway. But we'll get to that. So that's okay. It's fine. This is how it works. <clears throat> In the pre-patch at level 60, you will have a total of 51 talent points to spend. 26 in your class, 25 in your spec. When you reach the maximum level of 70 in Dragonflight, you'll have 61 total talent points to spend with 31 in your class and 30 in your tree. So let's look at that really quickly. So 31 in this and 30 in this. So <clears throat> let's just see how far you can kind of get. If you go, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, nine. I don't know how many is in here. Ten, let's say. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, we're gonna get to like how many points you have to spend in each row because there's something that they're alluding to something there, and I'll get to it. But it looks like you can almost get to the bottom of this tree in like about fifteen points. So, what I'm wondering is if they're gonna force you to spend more points per row before the next row unlocks, right? I don't think it's going to be like five points per row. That doesn't really make sense, right? There's one here, and then you have to go, what, one, two, three? Like, that doesn't make sense, right? So there is going to be some kind of system because, like, you're, you're going to get 30 points to spend in this tree. If I can get all the way to the bottom with 15 points, well, then I could just go, like, 16, 17, let's say, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Like, I don't think there's any way that they're going to let you pick every single one of these powerful abilities. So I feel like as you get to the lower rings, you're going to have to invest. You're going to be forced to invest more points into, like, this row before you get access to the final row. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Let's look, let's look back at this. <clears throat> the point is we're going to have 31 class and 30 for our spec once we get to the a max level in Dragonflight. Can I get all of the talents in the class and the spec tree? No. You will not be able to attain every talent in these trees. Similar to our current system, max level builds will have to make decisions about what to include and exclude. So once again, like I don't know what that means because like 
if I'm counting 30 points in this tree, I can get access to all of them. So there's clearly some sort of gating. There's some gating going on at some point in this tree. Maybe once you get to like this row here, you have to put in five points into some of these things and like and then five more points into here. And then that will leave you with only like two points left for the bottom. We're not really sure. Can you spend points in a spec tree that is different from your current spec? So that's like the vanilla style where you put 30 points into one and then you spilled over into the second tree. And they're saying, no, you can't do that. You will not be able to spend points in a spec tree different from your own. If you put points into Resto Druid and then you swap to balance, you'll no longer get the restoration bonus. You'll have new points to spend in balance. So fair enough. How does spending points <clears throat> in the talent tree work? So this is interesting. First, you must obtain talents in the top row of a tree first. Okay, fair enough. That make that makes sense, right? So, here or or here, right? So it looks like. Let, let, let's let's just keep reading. Let me move this over here for a second. I'll bring it back. Then, after obtaining all ranks in any talent, you may spend points in the subsequent trees, in the. Subsequent t talents in the tree indicated by an arrow. Okay, so let's just really quickly, we're going to dissect that. What that means is you must spend both points in rejuve, in the rejuve thing here, in order to unlock this. You can't spend one point in this rejuve thing and then unlock this. So you need to unlock this plus this plus this. Rejuve Swiftmen, rejuve buff. You have to do Starfire, uh, Solar Beam, and Moonkin form. Then you get access to this triple one. You must put one, two, three points in, five, six, seven, eight points in here, two points here to get unlocked access to this. Then you need to do all three of these points before you get to Cyclone. Okay, that's what they're saying there. You can't just put one point into this and then you get Cyclone for free. Okay. If a talent has multiple arrows leading to it, you may obtain it after fully buying at least one of the prerequisites. Oh. <laughs> That's the opposite of what I just said, right? Hold on. If a talent has multiple arrows leading to it, you may obtain it after fully buying at least one of the prerequisites. Okay. That's actually a little better. I just completely lied about that. So it looks like you only actually have to buy these two to get access to this. And that actually makes sense because it's showing me right there. That's actually way better. So look over here on the on the on the resto side. That means that you can go this direction or you can go this direction. And you can still get scenario in Ward. You don't have to, like, go fill out both ways. So that's actually way better. My apologies, guys. I, I totally uh, misread that. But that's great. So it means that you kind of have multiple paths to get down there, right? So, for example, if you wanted to get this overgrowth talent, this is an overgrowth talent, you could either go this, this direction. You can go this direction. And then you can go down here into Soul of the Forest. Or you can go down here to scenario in Ward. And you can go two different ways, whichever way you want to go. So that actually creates a, a little bit more uh, diversity, which is very exciting. I like that. Your class tree may grant you one to two starting talents automatically before you have to start spending points based on what specializ specialization you are. These do not cost any talent points and are free. This is really cool. So this means that if I am a Resto Druid, they're going to give me Rejuve right off the bat. I don't have to pay for Rejuve. That's what I'm understanding. If I am Boomkin, they're going to give me Starfire. If I am Bear, they're going to give me a Frenzied Regen. If I'm Kitty, they're going to give me Rake. Does that make sense? So whatever you're doing over here, whatever you change over on this side, you're going to automatically get gifted one of these talents up here. Does that make sense? So obviously this person's resto, they're going to get rejuve for free. So that's that's pretty great. It means that you have like a one or two less talents to spend in in the base uh, druid tree or the base class tree. Certain rows do not allow you to progress beyond them until you've spent a certain number of points in the talents you have access to. So they're not they're being vague about this. This is what I was saying earlier. They're being really vague about this. So again, if we have 30 points in the restoration tree, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I only need 10 points to get down to flourish. That's not correct. They're saying right here with this post that certain rows do not allow you to progress beyond them until you've spent a certain number of points you have access to. So I'm guessing it's like maybe right here and right here. I don't know. But let's just pretend like it's... Let's pretend like it's this row here. So you have to spend like 
it looks like they've spent four points in this row. Maybe that's what you're going to have to do. And then you have to spend another four points in this row before you get access to this row. I don't know because – and it, it looks like this row here, they've only spent one point across this entire row. But they have access to the lower stuff. So I don't know. They're going to have to – they're going to have to tell us exactly how this is going to work because it's not really clear right now. Which rows do we have to spend a certain number of points in before we get access to everything below it? So there is going to be some gating here because we get 30 points and I can just walk my way down to flourish within 10 points. That's not going to be the way it works. So we'll wait to see what that means. But ultimately, this is shaping up to be really good, I think. We have really, really good uh, diversity and where we can move, right? I can either get to Scenarian Ward this way or I can get to it this way. And then the only other barrier is that I'm going to have to spend a certain number of points in, in whichever rows are important or maybe just a certain number of points in total. Like I have to spend 20 points in the entire tree before I even get access to one of these things down here. Like maybe that's going to be the case. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so very cool. What do the shapes of the talent points mean? We've already talked about this, but squares are active abilities circles are passives octagons are choice nodes where you get to pick one of multiple options in a talent row that confirms what we saw in the opener that this um uh hexagon here is in fact choosing between convoke and tree of life so again squares are abilities circles are passives uh the hexagons are <clears throat> choices and i think they are saying that um there can be passives. I'll get to that in a minute. Some of these options can be passives. What are the diamond shape abilities that appear on the side of the street? Those are a mechanic that, as of this writing, we are not planning to include. We will give further updates as needed as we continue to make changes and uh, set of features and mechanics. So, like, this is interesting. These They're talking about these here, these diamonds. This is nature, swiftness, and tranquility. These are, like, core abilities uh, to the, the Resto Druid. And same over here. Uh, rebirth and stampeding roar those are core utility abilities to the base kit of the druid so what i'm guessing is they're just going to get they're saying that they're not going to include this and they're just going to give it to you for free like they're not going to take them away there's no way they can't take away tranquility and nature swiftness they can't take away a any of them so they're probably just going to give them to us baseline and not have them be a part of the tree which is kind of a bummer i like the way they were looking there but anyway I think that they don't want you to have to select them as a talent. They just want them to be baseline because that's kind of a bummer. If, you, if you're if you a Resto Druid and you have to select Tranquility as a talent, that doesn't make sense, right? That That's just a baseline thing that you should be getting. So very, very good to, um, to figure that out. What are those talents with small arrows on both sides of it? Those talents are selection nodes where you hover over that node. It will present multiple options for you to select. These choices can be either a new active ability or a passive benefit. So... For example, they're talking about, oh, sorry. Nope, come back. They're talking about these choices here, Flourish versus Convoke slash Tree of Life. We don't know what else is in the Flourish one, but <clears throat> there are ones like this Overgrowth uh, talent. That's an active ability, but in the same Druid row of Overgrowth, there's a talent called Germination, where it just adds a second rejuvenation if somebody gets low enough in health. So, I'm guessing that these choices will have stuff like that, right? Scenarium Ward, there's an, there's another a talent in the Scenarium Ward row that it's called Abundance, and it makes your all your rejuves are, uh, reduce the cost of your regrowth. So, like, the, they're showing only active abilities here, but I'm guessing that you'll be able to swap that to a passive ability if you want to, to make, your, to make it, like, you know, like you can now. You can make your talent choices more passive if you want to. So... Very cool. I think on the Enhancement Shaman tree, for example, you would see something like Lava Lash or Hot Hand, sorry, would be in there as a talent choice. And then a passive option to that would be something like Storm Flurry, right? That's a very obvious uh, thing that I could see happening. So go cool to see that you can actually pick passive talents as well, just like it was before. How do the talents with multiple ranks work? Talents that have multiple ranks will require additional points to be spent per rank of the talent. Currently, we do not have any active abilities with multiple ranks, only passive effects. The value of these passive effects may not linear, linear, linearly scale. Linearly? I can't say that word. With points invested. That's important to say. Not linearly scale with points invested. You must purchase all available talent ranks of a multi-rank talent to progress further down the tree from this node. So, for example... The rejuve thing, once again, you have to purchase both of these in order to move down to, to the Scenarium War buff and to whatever this is. So 
Here's what they're kind of saying. We were talking about this earlier in the video. We we're worried about the passive ones that have multiple ranks. We're worried about them just being a stat stick. This cannot just be rejuvenation is 10% stronger. What it would be really cool, it would be really, really cool is if it was rejuvenation has a 5% chance to duplicate itself. If you put one point into this and then if you put one more point into it, rejuvenation now has a 10% chance to duplicate itself every time it heals. Maybe that's too high. Maybe it could be 2.5% chance and then a 5% chance to duplicate itself every time it heals. That is a legendary effect from the game right now. That would be a really cool passive effect to have here. It's not completely game breaking, like having a 5% chance for your rejuves to duplicate themselves. It's quite strong, but I don't think it's game breaking. I think you could put it in here. So that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for to be in these, these passive talent trees, not just 10% more, more healing on rejuve. So they're saying here that the value of these passive effects may not scale linearly, which means it might not just be 5% more, 10% more, 15% more. It could be something like... <clears throat> uh, like the cooldown reduction I was talking about, or it could be an additional effect. Like once you get two ranks into this, like maybe it does nothing. If you have one rank into it, that, that sounds kind of bad, but I don't know. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Maybe they're thinking like you put one rank into this rejuve one and it actually does nothing. Once you get two ranks into it, now a completely new effect takes place. And it says something like, your rejuvenation healing is now 50% stronger on allies that are below 50% health. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you, you, it does nothing for you when you put one rank into it. But once you get two ranks into it, it gives you, like, an incredible effect. So, like, it's worth the investment of that, like, wasted talent. Do you see what I'm, see what I'm saying there? Um, where you have to waste kind of your first talent. Now, maybe they won't do it that way, but I'm really hoping that that's what this means. That, like, they don't want to just have... 5% stronger, 10% stronger, 15% stronger, because nobody wants that. You must purchase all talents to progress. So we're, we're, we're going to look at this very closely over the next couple weeks, and hopefully Blizzard can clarify this a little bit more. I really wish they would just give us an example of like exactly what they're talking about, but maybe they don't have one ready to go yet. But the same goes for something like Iron Bark, right? That we don't want Iron Bark to just be 10% stronger. It's got to be like, you know... <clears throat> Let's say you put one point into this Iron Bark buff and it does nothing, but then you put a second point into the Iron Bark buff and it says that your Iron Bark, when you cast Iron Bark, it will also be applied to the target of your Life Bloom. Right? So now you Iron Bark somebody else and it will also apply to the, to the target of your Life Bloom. Or maybe when you Life Bloom your target, when you Iron Bark your target with Life Bloom, uh, you also receive... A, an iron bark as well right so something like that something interesting that makes me think okay that's worth investing two talent points into even though the first talent point doesn't get me anything because it's not scaling linearly hopefully you guys understand what i'm saying there so let's move on will some talents uh be in more than one specialization talent tree where this makes sense yes for both feral and guardian might have berserk in their talent tree while resto and balance will not so that makes sense right and note, they know that Berserk is not the same for Feral and Guardian. They want to be clear that the talents do not have to be exclusive to one spec tree or another because in that spec tree, it's not uh, the class tree. So, <clears throat> for example, yeah, they're, they're saying that, like, you will get, um, like, Berserk uh, will be in more than one specialization tree. So, we'll see how that kind of pans out. There isn't a whole lot of crossover like, there's some crossover. I think Druid has one of the most significant amount of crossover talents. That would um, make sense for both. But, yeah. Will the class talent tree change when I'm changing specs? Uh, with very few exceptions. Nothing will change in the class tree when changing a specialization. One example might be Counter Shot, which will change to Muzzle if you choose Survival, right? So, they're basically saying, like, this tree is not going to change much. But let's pretend like this. you were a Marksman Hunter. This is going to be Counter Shot. And then if you switch to survival, the icon here is going to change. It'll become muzzle because they want to keep the thematic uh, look uh, and feel of like the different specs, right? So, yeah. Is the class tree just utility and the spec tree is where all the throughput is? No, there can definitely be some throughput increasing talents in the class tree, but the spec tree likely has the majority of them. One of the main purposes of the class tree is to give, the, uh, give you a place to explore parts of your class that are not focused on in your main roles throughput, such as utility abilities that are more closely connected to other specializations. 
So we limit the pressure to make throughput optimizations in the class tree. So this is pretty cool. What they're saying is like, yes, in here, we want a resto druid to have some options for DPS. So he can go full boomkin if you want. And you could even move over here and get like mighty bash and get your your kick and get get another kick, which we'll talk about in a minute because I think I think they're gonna basically open up open everything up for all the kicks to be available to different uh, party moves, which is very cool. But but they want most of the throughput to be here. So like your throughput as a healer, you're supposed to be a healer. Your throughput is here. Your general throughput options here are are still there. Things like starfire and solar beam, uh, they're still there, but they're uh, Sunfire, sorry, that's Sunfire, not Solar Beam. But you're not going to be able to get, like, a whole bunch of Giga Chad damage from your regular Druid tree, because otherwise you just run healers everywhere, right? And then they could just, like, heal stuff and then do crazy amounts of damage. So there needs to be a distinction there still, okay? <clears throat> are all talent points new? No, most of them are existing things from the current or past game, but there are also new active and passive abilities in the new class and spec trees. That's really good to hear, actually. There's going to be new stuff. I mean, we can already see an icon here that is not currently in the game for Druid. I have no idea what this spell is. I think this icon has existed for years in World of Warcraft, but we're not really sure what this uh, icon is. What about abilities you gain when you level up in New Player Experience and Exiles Reach? Exiles Reach is remaining unchanged for the most part. That doesn't really matter. What about some abilities that are super important for gameplay, such as interrupt abilities that you don't gain from the starting experience? We are currently trying to focus on many combat altering abilities as uh, possible into the new talent trees. This can include such things as movement abilities, interrupts, dispels, hybrid healing options, defensive abilities, etc. Our goal is to set up trees and paths so that there are opportunities to choose between different types of utility, but not, for example, abandon all utility choices entirely in order to maximize your DPS. So... If you choose to have, again, if you choose to not have an interrupt, it is likely because you traded it out for some other type of utility or CC you believe would be more useful. The inverse is also true. Specializations that do not have certain capabilities in Shadowlands, such as an interrupt, may be able to obtain them to give, and they have to give up something that they currently do have. So that is really exciting. So they're saying here that, like, this, I believe, is a kick for Resto Druids. So Resto Druids, I mean, dr any Druid can now have a kick including like uh, Boomkin. I don't know if Boomkins, they didn't. They had Solar Beam, right? Maybe that'll stay Solar Beam. I'm not entirely sure. But it looks to me like as a Resto Druid, let's say, you can have a kick as well as a stun in uh, Kitty form, as well as a Typhoon. And then Ursul's is probably here. So there's Ursul's right over there. You can have Ursul's Vortex as well. So like you can give up having Ursul's Vortex if you'd rather have Typhoon. And this is something that, like, I wish was in the game right now because when I run my Resto Druid, I always run with Feral Affinity because I like Kitty Weaving, but Feral Affinity does not get me Typhoon. And on Sanguine Weeks, I would really love to have Typhoon. So I'm actually really excited for this. You can pick and choose whichever CC you want, but getting rid of, you know, Ursul's does not give you more DPS. And that's what they're trying to make sure that ha happens. They don't want you to be like, okay, I'm going to give up my CC so that I can get 5% more damage. They don't ever want that to be the case. If you give up one CC, you're trading it for another CC somewhere else. Okay. Will there be a loadout system that we can swap between? Yes, we already knew that. Um, won't people just go to a website and find a build they're experimenting with? And they're like, yeah, that'll probably happen, but we're hoping people will experiment. I'll be experimenting. Um, we're going to skip. Does it look overwhelming? Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't care if it looks overwhelming. I think it's important to have some complexity here. This is actually the last thing I, I want to touch on here. <clears throat> How much of my class is going to be in this talent tree compared to other add-on sex extra systems like legendaries, covenants, conduits, soul binds? We're trying to put as much class related stuff in here as, as we can into this new talent system. As a singular place to manage your character, there will still be some abilities that are granted to players from leveling up, but significantly fewer. We recognize that such abilities, abilities such as Eye of the Beast or Astral Recall or Teleport Moonglade aren't combat-altering choices, and so they're just going to bake those in uh, for free. Um, so basically what they're saying there is like, we're trying to get away from borrowed power, and we're trying to put as much into the system as we can. That means it's inherently going to be more complicated than the current talent system is, and that's okay. We're all going to get used to that, I promise. Uh, with the above statement that we have to spend talent points to get our current abilities back, does that mean that there's nothing new? So they said that here. We're trying to put as many combat-related abilities in the tree as we can, which, do, which does mean you're going to have to invest talent points into the system to get your current abilities back. So like that means, for example, Rejuvenation used to be baseline, but and Swiftman baseline. 
and wild growth was baseline for healers, but now you have to go pick that talent. But that's okay. I mean, that's the whole point of this tree. You're going to be picking those talents anyway. So, uh, but here's here's a here's a list. Good final question that they ask here. Does that mean that I can get talents? Or sorry, with the above statement, then we have to spend uh, talent points to get our current abilities back. Does that mean that there's nothing new? Absolutely not. There will be some new abilities in Dragon Flights, as well as returning artifact traits set bonuses and legendary effects etc so they're going back even as far as bfa and legion sorry and they're grabbing potentially artifact traits from legion which i'm very excited about because like i loved the legion artifact weapon abilities they were so awesome so i, I this is actually this is really exciting that they that they kind of put this into this is a bit of a this is a bit of a like uh admission from them that i don't know if they meant to do but the new system also opens up some opportunities for you to get for you to get some abilities that were otherwise locked behind a spec choice or to possibly have combinations that were impossible in Shadowlands, such as multiple talents from the same row at a time. That's exciting. So where the best example of that that I can that I can find right now is going to be, I think, is right here where oh, let me make sure you guys can see that. Yeah, you guys can see that. Okay. So down here, this looks like a choice between photosynthesis and some other talent that I can't tell what it is. Photosynthesis and flourish share a talent pool. They're on the same talent row. So it looks to me like you could have both photosynthesis if you moved over here and invested in this part of the tree and, and um, flourish, which is amazing. Like that was like an entire legendary effect, I think, from... Um, from BFA or Legion? It might have been Legion. I think it was Legion where you got to choose two different legendary powers from the same row. I mean, that shit's like amazing, right? Like we're excited about that. So there's some really exciting things here with the talents. I think that it looks like you're going to be able to potentially pick two talents from the same row. Let me just go over a little recap here. Oh my God, Windows, chill. <clears throat> so it looks like you might be able to pick talents from the same row, which is very cool. You'll be able to reset your talents in any town, just like you can now. So you can, and you can also save your loadouts, which is very cool. You can uh, grab lots of different kinds of CC, but they're not gonna make it so that you get any more like power from dumping a CC and then getting like another powerful ability. They want this to be mostly utility on the class side. They are gonna give you some free abilities. So if you're a resto, you're probably gonna get a rejuve. If you're a kitty, you're gonna get like rake to start, right? So you're gonna get a bunch of free things like that which is very good. That's going to save you some talent points. You're going to get 31 talent points over here to spend and 30 talent points to spend in the spec tree. The spec tree looks like you can get all the way to the bottom in about 10 or 11 points, but they are going to gate you a little bit. Some of these rows, we don't know what the exact number is yet, but some of these rows are going to be gated where you have to spend a certain number of points in that row before you can move on to the row beneath it. You do have to complete, if you have a passive talent point that has two or three um, points to put in. You have to put in all of those points before you can move on to the next row below it. Okay, very important. These square ones are abilities. The circle ones are passive. The hexagonal ones are a choice. We have had that confirmed. Some of these talent choices in the hexagon one can be passive talents as well. They're not all going to be active abilities. On top of that, we're obviously just really hoping that these passive ones that have multiple points in them are significant bonuses to the ability itself, that they're worth taking. Not something like plus 10% more healing on bark skin. It needs to be that if you put two points into this thing, your bark skin can now be cast on an additional ally or it will be automatically cast on the target of your life bloom. Something like that that's really interesting and gives you more gameplay features, right? That's what we want these passives to be all about, so... That's the talent tree, guys, in a nutshell. Those are the big updates that I had. Really, really good stuff. Go read this article if you want, but I tried to sort of summarize as much of it up as I could. I know that took a little bit longer than normal, but it's just sort of the nature of these things. I, I'm, you know, I try to go as quick as I can, but you can't always go that fast. But it looks like the talent tree system is looking very, very exciting. And like it's shaping up to be really good. I just hope that we can get more of these talent trees to examine uh, soon. But it's looking very exciting. I think that this is going to be a fun and dynamic system. They're consolidating so much of our power and putting it into this one system. And that is exactly the direction that the game needs to go. No more of these borrowed power systems where like our 
our, our uh, heroes don't feel like they even work. They don't even function correctly until you get like two or three board power systems under your belt. We don't want that. So very excited about the direction that Blizzard is going with this game. Can't wait to get in there and try it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, drop a like down below. Give me a comment on what you think about these talent trees now and what you think about this new system. Do you like the direction that Blizzard is going with the game? If you want to subscribe, I would also appreciate that as well. Until the next one, guys, we'll see you later.